Hello, and welcome to this episode of Ask a Navigide, which is part of the Abundant Aging podcast series. I'm Mike, your host, and on this show, we help families and really everybody tackle subjects in aging and family caregiving that can be stressful to work through. And we do this through tips and advice from the United Church Homes Navigide team. Our Navigides have decades of experience helping families work through these issues, and we want to help everyone everywhere age with abundance. Today, we're lucky to have Robin with us, who will help us uh, understand Medicare brokers, Medicare mm -hmm. Advantage brokers. On an earlier podcast, we talked about the basics of Medicare, medical care supplement insurance, and Medicare Advantage plans. And as I understand it, when you are looking at a Medicare Advantage plan in particular, very often it's helpful to work through your, your choices with the help of a Medicare Advantage plan broker. So Robin, I guess first question is, um, can you just tell us a little bit more about what a Medicare Advantage plan broker is or does? Yes. So that is my background, although being a Navigide is certainly my favorite job that I've ever had. I was an insurance agent for senior health care from 1999 um, until about two years ago. I still carried a license, even though I didn't sell insurance anymore. And so I always was a broker because that was important to me. I never felt that um, being with one company only would allow me to provide the needs for, that everybody has. So a broker simply means that you're contracted with more than one company so that you can offer a broader range of services. One misconception with Medicare Advantage plans that people think is because oftentimes there's no premium or very little premium. So I think the client might believe that the agent really doesn't get paid very much either or something along those lines. But in fact, they do. They make a lot of money off Medicare Advantage plans. So again, you don't want someone that is just with one company or has a preference for one company because although ethically they're not supposed to, they could be motivated by what their reimbursement is. I imagine that if, you know, let's say I turn 65 and uh, now I have the opportunity to be part of a Medicare Advantage plan, typically a Medicare, if I'm in an employer plan, you know, I pay mm -hmm. premiums through my paycheck to my employer. Are the premiums for a Medicare Advantage plan typically lower than what I would be paying with an employer plan? Oh my goodness, yes. Uh, oftentimes there are not a premium. It's not a premium, especially with the HMOs. Um, oh, wow. I didn't yes. know that. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so, okay. So now it, it's, it's actually a good thing. I'm going to have more, you know, maybe more disposable income depending on my situation, but you have, you have Medicare Advantage plans, but there's, there's, I, how many Medicare Advantage plans are there out there? I would say uh, probably 10 that are the most common that we see. I mean, every, you know, all over the country, there might be smaller companies that develop their own plans. They typically don't last very long or they get bought up by a bigger plan, but I would say 10 that you would see for the most part. And some of those larger plans, again, might have different plans with, within themselves. So they could have a, a PPO and HMO. And then within those, you know, sometimes they have a, a certain plan, but then they might tag on gold because it has extra benefits. So that type of thing. Okay. So I'm imagining myself going to the computer and, and signing up for a Medicare Advantage plan. And then I'm seeing that I've got, and the 10, these are all names that, that we know. We probably have had United, Humana, Cigna, the Blues plans, yeah, you know, th things like okay. that. So yeah, and these, they're in the same business. So they'll provide a Medicare Advantage plan. And so I go to the computer and I type in my county. I sort of, I, I basically see what the, you know, what the plans are available in my area. And I'm going to have probably mm -hmm. maybe two or three big carriers, let's say. And then maybe some other plans that are new to me. And then under each of them, I'm going to have PPO, HMO, gold, silver, platinum, plaid, whatever it might be. So, so this is where a Medicare Advantage plan broker could help, right? And, and how would I yes. find a Medicare Advantage plan broker? Let's see if I can find it here. Yeah. So um, SHIP is the State Health Insurance Assistance Program. Um, there okay. is a link that maybe we can list that people can go to to find their local SHIP office. They are trained professionals in these. They can also educate them on maybe what is the best plan for them and then also help find them uh, an agent that can help them. So that's certainly what I recommend because those people are non-biased, uh, they're trained, and they can really uh, give good advice. So a good place to start would be to find yourself a Medicare Advantage plan broker, similar would be the SHIP, State Health Insurance Plan website, www.shiphelp.org. Okay, mm -hmm. great. And okay, so now I found myself a Medicare Advantage plan broker. And mm -hmm. how? what would he or she uh, or they ask me 
uh, if uh, you know, just sort of suss me up and say, OK, here, here's my short list of recommendations for you. Well, if they're a broker, hopefully they're also going to present Medicare supplement plans because that's always the options. It's not always just going straight to a Medicare oh, Advantage okay. plan. Got it. So when they sit down with someone, really, they do want to ask some personal questions and they want to see you know, what their income is, what type of savings they have if they have uh, accessible disposable income available. So those are the types of things that you want to ask as well. You want to see what they're looking for. What, what do they want out of a plan? Would they rather just pay a premium and not worry about it, not have to worry about having any out of pocket? Or would they rather have more disposable, uh, no premium each month and have the possibility of some out of pocket should health issues arise? So really, those are the things you want to look at. And then once you have those answers, you can narrow it down. That always seems to be the trade-off, right? I mean, lower premiums, more out of pocket if something happens, or higher premiums. Yeah, and and you said something earlier about qualification. So if if they're looking at income, right? A Medicare Advantage plan broker also say, well, look, you know, you might because of your income and your situation, you might be able to get Medicaid benefits, or or you might be able to be what they call, like I said, both Medicare and Medicaid. A good broker would 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 kind of give you that option as well, right? Certainly. And because you can get a, a richer Medicare Advantage benefit if you're considered what's called dual eligible, which is what that is. Got it. Very interesting. Are Medicare Advantage plan brokers, are they professionally licensed? Uh, should you look for any sort of a certification or things that the broker might have? Uh, some of them might have a senior advisor certification. But in general, they have to go through a lot of training every single year to be certified to represent companies to sell Medicare Advantage plans. So they and, and even if you're a broker, you have to do that with every single company that you're licensed with. So that usually starts in the summer because um, open enrollment will start in October. So they have to go through a lot of training. Right, because there is that open enrollment period, right? I always see the commercials in in like September and October, and they're talking about you know these kind of new benefits Medicare Advantage can provide, like home care and exercise and things like that. And then you'll call, and that's another way people kind of find Medicare Advantage broke because they they get sold to, right? I mean, they get mm -hmm. you're going to get a letter in the mail, you're going to get all this stuff, which is fine. They're allowed to advertise. That's it, that, that's okay. Um, but when you're looking at at, at choosing a broker. What sort of things should you should you factor in to say maybe this person could help me out more than this one or this person might have more of my best interest at, at, at heart? I mean, I think they all you get into this business because you do have people's best interests at heart. But, but just to give people more confidence with, with the person they might be working with. I think you could just get a feel if they just seem to be so you know stuck on one particular plan from the get go. That would be a red flag if they're not even really asking you questions that I had mentioned as far as your income, what it is that you're looking for, what do you want out of your plan? Um, how often do you see the doctor? If they're really not even asking those questions, that would be a red flag that they came there just to give you the one plan and that's it. Okay. So a Medicare Advantage plan broker should be interested in you as a person. They should be interested in you and your best interest because do Medicare Advantage plan brokers get paid more if you stay on the Medicare Advantage plan that they help cho you choose for, for, for longer? Like if you choose, because yes. like, I know you can change every single year, right? So, mm -hmm. but if you stay on a, on a plan for longer, then that ben benefits the Medicare Advantage plan broker, right? Well, I guess that's a tough question because it's, it's less headache because if they just are getting a straight premium from this person, but then they switch it up every year, bookkeeping wise, you know, if they're self-employed or even working with a company, because most brokers are self-employed, um, you know, it can be a hassle. So it certainly would be easier if they stayed on the same plan for a long period of time. But even then, the person should be reaching out yearly. This is where the person needs to advocate for themselves. They really should look at that plan every year. Oftentimes I hear all the time, well, it was great for me this year, so why would I change? Every year, those plans change. You really need to plug in those same factors. You need to plug in what your medicines are, what your network is. You need to look at all of that to make sure that the plan that you're in is still the best one for you. And if your broker is not calling you every year doing that, then that's not good either. Okay. So a broker is going to ask you about you and be interested in you. They're not going to just push a single plan. They're not going to be too salesy. This is a relationship that they're trying to build, right? Yes. And they want to build this relationship for the long term, because whether you stay on your current plan or choose to, uh, to, to go to another one, I mean, that's, that's, that's their job. That's a responsibility. Yes. I mean, so I guess another sort of thing you should consider is like, if you're happy with your Medicare Advantage plan and your broker contacts you yearly, and then they seem to be putting a hard sell in for a new type of plan, is that, is that a red flag? 
It might be. You, you'd want to know why. Because sometimes it might be that they have a better uh, transportation benefit, grocery benefit, over-the-counter benefit. But although those are nice, and I know that people need that, you want to make sure that your medical needs are going to be covered to the best for you. That's interesting. It's a relationship that they'll contact you, at, you know, through the life of your experience, as, you know, as long as you wish, with, with the Medicare or Medicare Advantage program. Mm -hmm. They know that it's in your best interest to switch from one plan to the other. So if, if they are recommending a certain type of plan, we've talked mm -hmm. about you know, doctors being in network, covering you know, medical needs, uh, that sort of thing. What are other good questions you should ask your Medicare Advantage plan broker when they're when they're saying this might be a good, a good plan for you? Travel. If that person plans on traveling in their retirement age, that's a biggie. They want to know what type of coverage is available if they travel. And, you know, a PPO, that's where you might look at the differences between PPO versus HMO. Because if you do travel, most of them, even HMOs, have emergency benefits. But again, it's usually for an emergency room or urgent care facility. It's not for any length of stay in a hospital. But if you have a PPO, you're going to, you know, you're going to have coverage regardless if it's in network or out of network. And let's say it's open enrollment period and you've chosen a plan and then, oops, you know what? I like that other plan or you've already signed the paperwork and all the rest of it. I mean, is it okay to go back to your Medicare Advantage plan broker and say, you know what? I think I, something just came to me. I, it, I shouldn't feel bad about doing that. Right. But I only have a certain amount of time Correct. to do that. Okay. Right. Well, you have it in between October and um, December, the first of December, but then after the first of the year, you have the first three months to make one change. Okay. That's great to know. So, cause you'll be on the plan and you'll experience it. Right. And, and mm -hmm. you'll, you'll have a chance to say, oops, I didn't know this. I didn't figure that. So you do. So the open enrollment period from October through December mm -hmm. and then January, February, March is a period where you can say, nope, I want to change to something else. Yes. Also, if you have state assistance, you actually can change once a quarter. They're actually called special needs plans. So if you have a chronic illness or if you have state assistance, there's lots of reasons why you might have what's called a special needs plans. But usually if you have those, you can um, switch more often if needed. I certainly don't recommend doing that once a quarter. But if you receive a notice in the mail that says your insurance company, because they must notify you at least 30 days ahead of time, if they're not going to cover a medication anymore, that would give you time to uh, get with your broker, find a new plan, and then it would become effective the first of the following month. Okay, that's great to know. So this is for the this is for special needs plans you, mm -hmm. you're talking about, right? So because that's that's that that's kind of a scary scenario, right? You're on a medication, mm -hmm. suddenly it's not covered anymore, but there are rules around that. Yes, they can't just they can't just drop coverage, not tell you, not give you time to to change. Correct. Or if you move. That's another special situation from county. Could just be within the same state, but to a different county, you'll have to switch to a different plan. Because Medicare Advantage plans, it's done by county. Well, this has been terrific, Rob, and I really appreciate you sharing this knowledge with us. It's terrific stuff. Um, we could talk for a long time about this, but it's time to wrap up this episode of Ask a Navigate. And thank you, our listener, for listening to this episode of Ask a Navigate, which is part of the Abundant Aging podcast series brought to you by United Church Homes. Uh, if you like this week's show, please like, share, subscribe. I will always say that. For more information about the UCH Navigate program, please visit www.uchnaviguide.org. And for more information about United Church Homes, please visit www.unitedchurchhomes.org. 